Hello everybody and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. Uh, in today's video I would like to show you how to create this animation where, well not animation, but how to allow this plane to curve around this shape and you could use this in creating things like scrolls that are folding and unfolding and so on. Now most of the tutorials on YouTube right now are pretty much out of date uh, because Blender has changed quite a bit in the in, in the meantime so it doesn't really work the way it used to uh, so I'm just going to show you a few methods and how to avoid the uh, pitfall that I was in and which caused my mesh to go you know completely haywire and just not work properly uh, the way it should have so uh, let's begin so we start off by adding a plane and then we'll go into edit mode on this plane and select these two vertices on the right side press x on the keyboard and delete them now we're left with these two and while we are still in edit mode let's go in the top view and uh, basically you know we just just uh, scale this down bring it towards the center over here still in top view and then uh, go into um, uh, well, go into object mode again by pressing tab on the keyboard, add the new modifier and select screw. Once we have this in, let's add maybe two iterations and you know just some, some size just to bring it upwards like that. Uh, once we've done all of this, just make sure we press Alt uh, R, S and G on the keyboard just to reset everything in case anything is moved. Trust me, you, you, you want to do this just in order to not mess this mesh up. Uh, once you do this, you can then apply the screw modifier by pressing Ctrl A while hovering over the screw. And then we can go into edit mode again and uh, with the edge and edge mode, let's just Ctrl A, uh, select all of these edges and then with Shift A, let's select the outer edge as well. And then, you know, we'll select the entire edge, then press X on the keyboard and delete the edges. And now we're left with this uh, shape. Uh, while we have this, go back into object mode and again, Alt R G uh, S just to make sure everything is okay. Add a new modifier and we'll add the uh, simple deform. With the simple deform, change the tape, uh, tape here and then just go to Z axis and you can, you know, we just bring this up like that. Once you've done this, um, go into edit mode, sorry, apply the modifier. So either control A or apply from here. Go into edit mode, go to vertex mode and select all vertices. Make sure you're in edit mode while you do this. Do not do it in object mode. Then press S on the keyboard for scale, Z on the axis to just bring it uh, downwards like this. And once you do that, just make sure you set this parameter to zero so we flatten the shape. Um, now what we want to do is go into object mode, Alt R S G just to make sure everything is fine. Then we can just take the object and say, you know, uh, uh, control, sorry, control A, oh, control A, shift S on the keyboard, sorry, and just say selection to cursor. But since our, um, uh, you know, origin is already on the cursor, then the shape won't move. We'll leave it there for now. Let's just um, add in the other plane, which is the one that's going to fold. Let's bring it uh, somewhere around here um, and then we're also going to add, well, we're going to ed go into edit mode first. Select these two vertices over here and just press G on the keyboard and drag this uh, drag on the Y axis basically. Uh, make it a bit bigger just so we can see the effect. Then uh, go uh, select all the vertices um, and then press right, right click and then subdivide. Uh, we want to subdivide to about 10 times, something like that, or maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe 20 times, doesn't really matter, just so we can get more resolution on, on that. And then we can add a new modifier, which is a subdivision surface. Uh, let's just keep it as one, and we'll do it as a simple uh, method. Then add a new modifier, which is a curve. And with the selected, we should be able to select the curve here, but we haven't really converted this into a curve yet. And this is where most of the problems come from, because once you convert this into a curve and you want to put these all both together, as I said, things just sort of go, um, you know, go wrong. So this is why you need to ensure that your model is actually uh, appropriately, you know, is all reset on the location, rotation and scale as well when you do this. So don't change the shape of it outside edit mode. So now with the object selected, let's just go into edit mode. We can select this vertex over here and just extrude on the Y axis a little bit. So we have a 
point of, of entrance. And then we can select this one and extrude it as well and go on the uh, Y axis again, just so we can have another exit point. So depending on how much you want to fold this, if you go over the, over, over the amount of the curve that we have, then the plane will leave the curve entirely. So now we will go into object mode, press object over here and convert to curve from mesh. Now, if we select the plane, we can actually select the plane here and we can see that this is already changed. We want to then change the deform axis to um, Y and that's it. Now our mesh deforms. So once you have that, just make sure with the plane selected, you lock the X and Z, um, sorry, not the rotation, but the location. So now the mesh can only go this way. Uh, make sure you go to object and you press shade smooth so it looks a bit uh, nicer and as you can see now it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing which is to follow this curve on the y-axis now of course with the curve depending on the shade that you get and depending on how you tweak it you can have a smaller roll or a bigger roll or a, you know many many uh, folds uh, because you can see our plane actually finishes rolling on the actual curve and then it leaves it because there's not enough space on its left. Um, now one other trick that I want to show you when actually rotating these two together, best way to do is just to pair this plane with this curve. So just select first select the plane, then select the curve, control P and just parent. And now if you do anything to the curve, you can actually rotate the entire plane. So RX90, no, sorry, RY90, and now we have it facing this way. And our plane is still locked to the uh, Y axis and it will still go just, you know, work just fine. We can also, um, you know, you, you can't actually, uh, you can't do anything with the curve itself. So it doesn't matter if you want to move the curve or not, it will just move this plane. But if you, I believe if you, clear and keep transformation so they're no longer parent and uh, child um, if you actually take the curve itself and you want to move it like that it will actually make your plane sort of um, you know fold as well uh, only the only reason why it's not doing that properly is because you would need to properly align the plane compared to the to this um, to this shape in order to work properly but again you can rotate this very easily by just you know you can fold it just by uh, activating the plane um, so now I just want to show you uh, uh, another trick to make this plane look a bit more believable when it comes to deformation so we want to add another mesh which is a cube and then we'll go into edit mode just bring these two um, Sorry, bring these two, uh, uh, this, this face down, just uh, enough to cover the plane. Normally what I would do, I would just um, go into the visibil visibility tab and, sorry, the viewport display and just move this into wire, which makes things a lot easier. And then just make sure you center it quite nicely like that. Um, well, clearly I haven't centered it very properly nice, but um, okay, so, Right, I don't know why everything is showing up in wire now. That wasn't the um, idea, but uh, anyway. So I've got I've got the I've got the the shapes in there. Uh, the plane is actually inside. Um, the curve is inside. Now I want to select these vert uh, vertices and just just um, bring this upward like that. So the entire uh, you know the entire plane and curve is actually inside the cube. Now with that done, we can edit the cube and just add a few loops, maybe like that, this way, and then a few like that if you want to. So that's fine. Uh, we'll just select all of these and just bring them down a little bit. It's just, it's just way too high. Now with that done, we can select the plane and go to modifiers, add a new modifier, which is a mesh deform. With the mesh deform, we will select the cube and then click dynamic and then click bind. Um, and now if we go on the cube and we want to deform it you can see that it will deform the plane as well which is quite nice so some of the things that you can do um, let's say we um, let's say we fold it first so we folded it quite a bit now we'll select the box again go into edit mode and now we can just do something like this 
um, which I personally find it to be quite nice and just helps with the overall aesthetic. Um, it's, you know, again, all of these shapes will only work in the vicinity of the actual mesh. So if, it, if it's not um, affecting anything, it's, that's because it just, it's just not close enough to the, um, to the mesh itself. Uh, but you get the idea of this is how this works. Now if we select this again and we, you know, we play with the fold, you can see that it's bent the whole shape. So this helps with making things more stylized or more realistic. Again, you can add more subdivisions to this just to um, make it more um, realistic. Now, I don't quite understand why adding subdivisions has actually now ruined the um, effect. Uh, I guess it's because of the, um, the bind. So yeah, I think, yeah, you'll need to unbind it and then probably bind it again. But even if you do that, you'll have to make, because it's gonna take the, the cube as it's, uh, you know, this is the default state now of the cube. So again, before you, you uh, increase the subdivisions or anything like that, you, you may want to actually um, have your mesh finalized first. Um, so yeah, that, uh, you know, one other thing that I would do, so let's just remove the cube entirely. One other thing that I would do here is you could also add a solid uh, solidify. Uh, modifier, which again, this helps with making this um, look more like a rug or something like that. So, and then add the box and then do the deformation that you just saw. Uh, but yeah, overall, um, this is a nice way to do these. And you can also do more more advanced things like adding cloth physics and so on, and just makes make this all look a lot a lot better. But I hope this tutorial comes and you know comes to, to help to help you because the other tutorials I found on, on YouTube they are from older versions of Blender and their methods no longer fully apply. So this is the most recent one that I found and it works just fine. Just remember to edit your shapes only in edit mode when it comes to scaling, rotating, or moving about. Rather than you know when you want to change their shapes, rather than do it in object mode because that will ruin this entirely. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.